Hi, my name is Boris and in this video I'm going to show you around the new synth included in Ableton Live 12, which is called Meld. We will go through its best functions and deconstruct some synth patches to give you a better understanding of how to create your own sounds. Before we get into the video, if you like what we are doing on this channel, make sure to subscribe. We've got more content on Live 12 coming up. And if you'd like to learn Ableton 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out our beginner to advanced Live 12 start to finish course. All right, so let's get started. First of all, let's just give it a very quick listen. I have three sections prepared for you guys. Uh, we have some bread and butter type sounds. We have some very soft sounding melt presets in Ableton. And we also have some of the drum sounds that were included in the preset section. So let's just give this a listen. We have a pad. We have a supercell sound here. We have an analog style bass sound. And we also have an analog style plug with some added noise. And let's play some of the Ableton presets. Here is the Cracked Piano presets from Meld's preset library. And uh, here we have another preset. Uh, we have a pad sound called Signs by the Sea. Let's play it. Here are the included drum sounds. I'm just going to present some kick drums here. So a very synthy sounding kick drum, another one. So a tonal kick drum, uh, a preset called club kick. Also we have a lo-fi kick here. So quite a distorted sound. So the synth is capable of a wide variety of sounds. And let's get down to what this synth can actually do. So to give you a bit of an introduction, Ableton calls this synth a bitimbral macro oscillator synth. In my opinion, it's just a fancy way of saying that it's a two oscillator subtractive synth and macro oscillator, this could refer to these two macros, which you get for each of the oscillator type. Uh, it also could be seen as a wavetable synth because you get a variety of waveforms per single oscillator, which you can scroll through with these macros. So Melt doesn't really aim to mimic analog synths, uh, meaning that it usually doesn't sound very warm and the results from Melt tend to lean towards digital or cold sounds. That's just my impression so far, but it definitely can be used for the bread and butter type sounds, so it's quite flexible. And to give you a bit of background on Melt, it was inspired by some modular synths and it's supposed to be a tool for sonic exploration, you could say. If we zoom out, this becomes like a huge Excel sheet uh, and this just gives you an overview of how deep the modulations can go in this synth. Melt also has a lot of functionalities connected with the new scale awareness feature. So if you didn't know, we have the scale awareness button here. You can choose a global scale for the entire project and then you can lock into that scale by pressing this button right here. And this is also available in some audio effects now, but basically what happens is that Melt is going to be trying to fit your notes into the scale and this is also going to affect some of the uh, wavetables or shapes that are included here. Some of these are quite noisy. For example, here in the filter section, the membrane resonator, which has this sharp and flat, this is going to be affected by the scale awareness. And here uh, you can see that we have the flat and sharp, the swarm section, and also in the uh, dual basic shapes and in the chip wavetable. So scale awareness is huge the synth. Basically, this is probably the most complex synth in Ableton as of now. Let's just quickly go through the different sections that we have here. So first of all, we have two paths, path A and path B, and path A uh, is an oscillator or a wavetable, however you 
want to phrase it, it's controlled by these two macros. So first of all, we have a sine wave here, and then we, when we move the shape macro, it turns into a triangle, just like a wave table. And we have a song, and we have a square at the end, and then we can also use the tone function, which basically acts like a pulse width control. And we have some more very basic wave tables, and then we have the swarms, which sound really huge. Let me give you a quick demo. Wow, this is, uh, sounds really atonal, but we can also lock into the scale. So this sounds like a huge unison sound, and then the spacing really adds these weird overtones and the pitches around the harmonics. And we have uh, a swarm saw, square, triangle, and sine. And what else we have? We have some very curious wave tables here. So we have, for example, rain or we have bubble. So there's quite a bit to be explored here. We also have some FM and wave tables here. And we have the harmonic FM, default FM. Then we also have the simple FM. But for now, let's just go back to basic shapes. So the same thing repeats here in Oscillator B. And then we have the A section, which is a tab over here. And this corresponds to only this section. And we have the B tab, which corresponds to this section. So quite a lot of tab switching here, uh, necessary each time you want to adjust a certain oscillator. So now we have only oscillator A, so we're staying in the A tab. So of course we have an amplifier envelope, for example, now I'll add a long attack and a long release. And we have a modulation envelope, which can, for example, move the filter or anything else in the synth. Okay, and then we have the filters. The A filter is just for the A oscillator and the B filter is just for the B oscillator. We have some low pass filters. We have some uh, general purpose filters. So, so this can go from low pass to band pass to high pass. Uh, so this is quite versatile, but we also have classic low pass, high pass, band pass. Uh, two more low pass filters. And then we have way more really curious filters, which are going to be very, very useful. We have, of course, the LFO section, uh, which has quite elaborate uh, options here, two LFOs. And then we also have the matrix tab, which is it's best to just expand the view. In this section, you can exactly scroll down to see how many parameters we can apply the envelopes to, the, the modulation sources. So we have the LFOs and uh, we also have some MIDI and MPE options to be mapped to different parameters. And we can also take some modulators from the B section. So we have separate modulators in the B section. We can apply these to parameters in the A oscillator, which is basically cross modulation. The same goes for oscillator B. To switch, we just need to switch the tab either here or here. So it can be quite confusing at first, uh, but yeah, it, the colors are really Really a nice guideline on which oscillator we're working with so yellow is going to be B always and uh, yeah we have also some blue cross modulation features from oscillator A. So let's maybe now go through the different patches that I played at the beginning so just the bread and butter sounds and maybe these soft presets from uh, Mel's built-in preset library. Then we'll take a look at what interesting parameters this synth does. First of all, let's take a look at this pad. It sounds like this once again. Okay, very, very simple. Let's take a look at oscillator A. We have uh, this sound. We are using the square wave, which is at the top, shape up all the way up. We have the tone at this position, but we are modulating the tone, so oscillator macro 2, with LFO 1, which is basically giving us pulse width modulation, which as you can hear for a digital sort of sounding uh, synth sounds quite okay. And then we also have oscillator B. 
which includes most of what we hear. Uh, same logic applies here, it just moved one octave above. We have a separate filter for this one, opened up a bit, and uh, we have these nice tone controls, which can uh, make stuff bright or quite mellow sounding. And this acts a bit like a tilt sort of EQ. Now let's take a look at the Super Saw, and I really like the Swarm Saw because it reminds me of the classic JP8000 Roland synth, which was really famous for uh, some of the trance sounds of the 90s. So let's give the Super Saw a listen. This is oscillator A, and then we have some on top. And so most of it is oscillator A. We have just uh, a bit of motion added. Uh, if we go further, it's gonna be quite detuned. It is also nice for some settings. And then we are mostly just modulating the filter with the modulation envelope. And we're doing the same thing on oscillator B. If we expand the macros, uh, you can see that we are modulating filter frequency with modulation envelope. Same thing happens in oscillator B. And on top of this, we are adding the stack feature. So without it, it's mono, with just some of the effects are stereo, of course. But then when we add three voices, it actually spreads the sound nicely in stereo. And let's take a look at the bass sound. So most of it comes from, once again, oscillator A. Uh, we have the saw wave with the amp envelope, quite short decay, and then same with the modulation envelope applied to the filter. So this is what the matrix looks like. And then the same logic happens for oscillator B, but this one is just filtered noise. So we're just adding a bit of warmth to this sound. So let's take a look at the plug now. Very similar logic here. We have a saw wave with the modulation envelope mapped to oscillator B. And then also we have some filtered noise on top, but we just have some release added in order to um, basically give it a longer tail. Let's take a look at some of the built-in presets in Ableton. Uh, so Cracked Piano is one of them. Uh, so this sound comes mostly from Fault FM. Uh, this is a nice FM oscillator here. But what also happens is that we have the crackle oscillator, which just adds a bit of noise on top. So it sounds really lo-fi. One uh, other preset I wanted to show is the Signs by the Sea. We are playing sine waves here with the basic shapes, but also adding some filtered noise. And I think an LFO is applied here. Yeah, uh, LFOs are applied to the macros, so the frequency of the filtered noise, uh, to give that uh, a bit of a moving feeling. I'm not going to be going into the more aggressive sounding uh, drum sounds here. Okay, so what interesting things does this synth do? First of all, in my opinion, the swarm oscillators are definitely worth checking out. It's a really interesting way of creating super saw sounds and all kinds of different stacked unison type sounds. Also, of course, the pitch lock is great if you want to have a bit more structure when you are manipulating all these elaborate wavetable style oscillators. The tarp oscillator is really nice for kick drums. It can create some interesting sounding kick drums in my opinion. Mm, yeah, these different curious oscillator types like extra tone, bit grunge, shepherd's pie, which is this really weird swirling sound. Sounds like this. All of these are really worth exploring. With the modulation features, the cross modulation is really, really nice. So you can have a lot of modulators uh, on a single parameter, which is probably the point of having this huge Excel sheet style uh, modulation matrix. We have also some scale aware filters here. So the plate resonator and the membrane resonator. And I'm just going to show you some of these on a noise, filtered noise 
section. Uh, okay, so we have noise. And now let's enable the plate resonator. And uh, yeah, this is what it sounds like without locking into the scale. Really weird. But when we lock to the scale with the scale awareness feature, It can actually create some abstract sounding paths, maybe, or effects. So definitely worth exploring these two last filters. Now what else we have is spread modulation. So by default, we have spread added to the detune. So spread just affects what it usually does. When we add the stack uh, voices, it just detunes the sound, but it doesn't have to be applied to detune actually. When you think about adding unison, you're basically taking the left channel and detuning that, uh, for example, down, and you're, for example, taking the right channel and detuning that right uh, to simplify this a lot. Spread does a similar thing and you can assign it to something else. For instance, you can assign it to the filter. And what happens is, uh, let me show you. For example, let's take two, voices of stack and uh, we are going to be applying this to a simple low pass filter you can take spread and apply this to filter frequency and let's add spread all the way up so now i'm going to take utility and just show you the left channel has the filter rolled all the way down and the right channel has the filter open. So yeah, spread modulation basically splits your sound into, into stereo voices and, and just adds an offset between each channel. And uh, it's a really curious way of modulating different parameters in the synth, definitely. And also what we have here is MPE capabilities. So if you have a controller like the Push 3 or the Rolly Seaboard, uh, you can definitely make use of all these elaborate uh, MIDI and MPE modulation features here. I think this is a fairly nice addition and I'm really looking forward to lots of experimentation, especially with the deep modulation features. I'm sure that with time many producers will find great use for this soon. What do you think of Melt? Let us know in the comments. I hope you found this walkthrough through Melt useful. Make sure to check out our Music Production Academy with lots of start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres. And if you'd like to learn Life 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out our Beginner to Advanced Life 12 start to finish course. All of the links you'll find in the video description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like, write a comment, and I will see you in the next ones.